nice. Does your game have pickups and collectibles that look like this, but really you'd rather them look like this? Regardless of your answer, I'm Adam, I make games, and here's how you can do that. For this example, we'll be using Unity version 2020.3.18 F1, but most technologies have been in use for the past couple of versions of Unity, and so you should be safe to follow along in any somewhat recent version. As you can see, I have a basic 2D platformer game set up where you can jump around and collect coins and go to the finish. But as it stands right now, it doesn't feel especially good to collect the coins. We're gonna start by making some artwork that we'll use for the coins. I am no artist, but the software I'm using is called Asprite, and it's a great lightweight software for pixel art, but you should be able to find a very basic pixel art editor online for making static images like this. If you feel that this is still too hard to do, I have a GitHub link for the whole project in my description, and you can go there to download these files and use them as you wish. Firstly, I'll be making a simple 8x8 canvas coin. We'll export our project as coin.png. Then we'll make a circle using the circle tool again on an 8x8 canvas and we'll export it as a circle.png. Back in our project you can see that we have all the coins as a coin prefab so we only need to edit the prefab of the coin to make changes to it. We'll double click the coin prefab in our project window to open it in the prefab editor. Before we adjust anything, we need to change some settings to our pixel art files so they do not become blurry due to compression and filtering. So we set the compression to none and the filter mode to point no filter, and then we hit apply. We'll set our coin prefab sprite to the coin that we made and set the color to white. Then we're gonna add a new sprite as a child to the main parent object, which will be our circle, and we'll change the sprite to our circle that we made and set its scale to zero. And you'll see why in a moment. Next, we're gonna make some animations for our coin. We'll go to the animation window, which if you don't already have it open, go to window, animation, animation. Then make sure you have the top parent of your prefab selected and click create. We'll name our first one idle, and then we'll make a second animation called collect. I should note that when you take an object and click create in the animation window, it also creates an animator component on that object and an animator controller that is attached to the component that we'll use later. For our idle animation, we'll click the red record button, which will record any changes to the object and make it into a keyframe at wherever our slider is. We'll start by making the coin move up and down. So first, we'll move the coin down at the very beginning, and then move it up about halfway through the first second, and then copy and paste the first keyframe to the one second mark, and then we're done. For our collect animation, we want the coin to spin. So we'll start by setting its Y rotation to zero at the first frame, and after a second, setting it to 360. You'll see that it spins, but we want more spinning. So we'll set it to 360 times four, which is 1440. Next, we want the coin to rise upwards and shrink when it gets collected. So on the final frame, we'll move it up and set the scale to zero so that it rises and shrinks while it's spinning. Next, we'll have the circle pop out and fade away, so we'll set its scale to one, a little over halfway through the animation, and you can tweak this any way you like. As it's growing, we want its color alpha channel set to zero during the animation so that it fades out. I also made sure to press the red recording icon again to stop recording to set the original color of the ring to yellow so I don't mess up the animation, but change the color of the original sprite. Next, I went to the animation window to change how the animation interpolates from one frame to another. Here you'll see me select the scale property, so I only see the curves for scale, which is the X, Y, and Z. And I use this Bezier curve handles to make it so that all of it starts growing rapidly and then plateaus to its final size. Next, let's set up our animator controller. We'll go to the animator window, which you can go to by going to window, animation, animator. You'll see that the two states have already been made for us and that idle is our orange default state. We'll click on it to get to the animation file and ensure that the idle animation has loop time and loop pose checked since this animation will loop. That the collect animation has both of these unchecked because we want the coin to stop animating after the coin collection animation completes. We'll make a transition between idle and collect by right clicking and hitting add transition. We'll click the transition to make sure that the exit time is set to zero and the transition duration is also set to zero. We're going up to the parameters tab and adding a new parameter of type trigger. We'll name it collect. This is a keyword that we're gonna need for later. So if you name it something else, just don't forget what it is because we'll need it later in the code. If we hit plus under conditions, we'll now see that the collect is added as a parameter for the transition to the trigger. I almost forgot, but also ensure that the exit time and fixed duration are unchecked on your transition. Now we're going to our coin script that I made, which is very simple, but feel free to copy and paste my code when it comes up. Previously, we had our coins destroy themselves on collect, but now we have nice animations. We'll start by adding an animator called animator in our start function and setting it to get component animator as so. Then we will delete our destroy line and replace it with animator.setTrigger collect or whatever you named your parameter. And here's what you should have so far. But we can do more. Let's add a sound effect. 
To get a good coin sound effect, I am using SFXR, which is a free software for making 8-bit sounds and it's free online and for download as a desktop application. Highly recommend this for new devs who are making sound effects. We'll click the pick up slash coin button to randomly generate a few options until we're happy and we'll export as a .wav file called coincollect.wav. Now we'll go to our coin prefab and add an audio source component. We'll attach our coin collect sound and uncheck play on awake because we want it to only play when it gets collected. Now we go back to our code and add an audio source object called AS. We'll set it to get component audio source in our start function. And then on our collect coin function, we'll call as.play. Now when you pick up coins, you can hear it. As one final touch, we'll add a particle system to make sparkles on the coin using the Unity particle system, which is a little bit complicated, but I'll use some basic functionality and explain to you along the way what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, and you can tweak it to your coins to your liking. So to start here first, I'm going to go to the renderer. I'm going to change the material from the default particle to our default line or even our default sprite. Either one is fine um, to get these sort of squares. I'm gonna go over to shape, and I'm going to change the shape from donut to circle. Uh, and I'm going to go all the way up to our start speed and make it zero because we don't want the particles to actually fly anywhere. We just want them to sparkle and then disappear. So then I'm going to change the start size to 0 0.1. Maybe think they're a little bit too big, um, but we'll come back to that in a minute. We're going to change our radius of our circle down so it's just around the coin. So down to 0 0.31 in this case. We're going to change the start color, change it to random between two colors. And we're going to choose like a yellow and then like sort of a brighter yellow so that the sparkles become between either a bright yellow or a more vibrant yellow. Um, we're also going to change uh, our start rotation to a random value between zero and 360 so that they randomly rotated. Um, I'm realizing that they're too big, so I'm going to change them down to a size of 0 0.03. I'm then going to go to the color over lifetime. I'm going to set the very end to an alpha of zero so that they fade out. And I'm actually gonna make a new little keyframe in the middle so that they actually fade in very quickly at the beginning. So we'll set the alpha to zero at the beginning, and it'll quickly go to 255 and then it will fade out to zero. When we play, we see that they're all sparkling kind of nicely. These sparkles last too long, so I'm changing the lifetime from five to one so they fade out quicker. And because now there's not enough sparkles, I'm gonna change the emission rate over time from 10 to 30. I'm actually gonna change the lifetime to even lower to just 0.5. I'm gonna make the radius a little bit higher in the Y scale, so it sort of matches the shape of the coin, just so that the sparkles distribute themselves sort of evenly throughout the coin. And now they sparkle nicely. And here's where I realize that I've not disabled the collider and that the sparkles are still staying around. So we're gonna to go to our collect function and we're gonna take two little adjustments to it. That's gonna be in the first frame. We're gonna hit the record button we're going to disable the circle collider so that when they get picked up, you can't re-pick them up again. And the second part is getting rid of the particles. And so we'll go back to our particle system. We're gonna hit record and we're gonna go over to emission. And even though it's going to start at 30, by the time it gets to the end of the animation, we're gonna set the emission to zero. So that by the time the collection is over, the particles fade away. And now you'll see that we can no longer re-pick up the coins that the particles fade away nicely as the coin goes away. And that's how, with just a few adjustments, you can make some really juicy collectibles for your game. If you liked this video, please drop a like and consider subscribing. And feel free to comment what you'd like to see in future videos. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.